Welcome back. In the previous video, we learned about LibUV's thread pool and how the main thread offloads some of the async methods like pbkdf2 into the thread pool. We executed pbkdf2 three times, which all executed in parallel, indicating we have at least three threads in the pool. But the question is, how many threads are there in total? Well, let's find out with this third experiment. For experiment three, I'm going to set max calls equal to four. Rerun node index a couple of times. And we see almost the same time for all four hashes. There is slight difference, but on an average, it's close to 300. Let's now change max calls to 5. Run node index. And straight away, you can see there is something different. Hash 5 takes nearly twice the amount of time as the first 4 on average. Which can only mean one thing. LibUV's thread pool has 4 threads. When we execute pbkdf2 five times, the first four each take their own thread and complete in nearly the same time. The fifth call, however, has to wait for a thread to be free. When hash one is complete, hash five runs on the thread and finishes, resulting in twice the amount of time taken in total. So LibUV's thread pool has four threads by default. This will be our inference from experiment number 3. Now you might ask, can we increase the number of threads in the thread pool so that more calls to pbkdf2 can run in parallel leading to better performance? Well, the answer is yes. And that brings us to experiment number 4. For this experiment, we will increase the thread pool size. The way to do that is by setting a process environment variable. Process dot env dot uv underscore thread pool underscore size. Let's set it to 5 for now. If we rerun node index, you can see the fifth hash takes almost the same time and not twice as much as the other hashes. Set max calls to 6, run node index, and now the sixth hash takes twice as much. Update thread pool size to 6, and we see hash 6 doesn't take twice as much anymore. In this way, by increasing the thread pool size, we are able to improve the total time taken to run multiple calls of pbkdf2. And this will be our inference from experiment number 4. Now there is one important point to keep in mind when increasing the thread pool size. If you increase it beyond the number of CPU cores your machine has, the average time taken per method execution also increases. Which brings us to the next experiment. For experiment 5, I'm going to change size to 8 and max calls also to 8. If we rerun node index, we see all 8 hashes still consume approximately the same time, 300 milliseconds on average. Now though, I'm going to change thread pull size to 16 and max calls to 16. If we rerun node index, you can see almost all the 16 hashes take the same amount of time as the other. It is around 550 to 600 milliseconds, which is double the previous run. And this is because the operating system has to juggle 16 threads across 8 CPU cores, which is the case for my MacBook. 
Let me help you understand with a visual representation. Now my MacBook has eight cores. It has 10, but two are efficiency cores, which to be honest, I'm not sure if Node.js makes use of them the same way. When we have only one call to pbkdf2, it takes one thread, which takes one core. This takes approximately 270 milliseconds. When we change the thread pool size to eight and number of calls to eight, each call takes one thread, which in turn takes one core. This will still result in approximately 270 milliseconds for each call. Now though, when there are 16 threads and 16 pbkdf2 calls, we have one thread per call. But the operating system has to juggle 16 threads across eight cores. And the way the OS scheduler does this is to switch between threads, ensuring they all get equal amount of time. And because of this, 16 threads now have to share eight cores. This results in twice the amount of time for each pbkdf2 call. This is the reason we see 550 to 600 milliseconds instead of 270 to 300 milliseconds when we had fewer threads than CPU cores. So increasing the thread pool size can help with performance, but that is limited by the number of available CPU cores. This will be our inference from experiment number five. Hopefully you're now able to see under the hood how LibUV's thread pool helps execute some of the async methods in Node.js. Now hang on, why do I say some of the async methods? Why not all async methods? Well, let's discuss that in the next video. Thank you for watching. And if you're enjoying the videos, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.